Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Austro nerds and everybody else who has mortgaged their soul in pursuit of perfection that nobody will ever notice, apart from Bob, you bet your Takahashi Bob is going to zoom into your corner stars just to prove his optics are better than yours. Anyways, the curse of perfection on Bob aside, today we're going to dive into the Wonder Astro Mini V2 Rotator, a device so thin, so precise, so rigid, it might just replace your therapist, but probably not. My name is Ali Labedli and welcome to Astra Pharma. So why do I mention the device is possible anorexia? Well, Wonder actually claims that this rotator only adds 10 millimeters of optical length, so for a telescope start with back focus like my 140 millimeter APO, this is good news. I originally got the ZWO CAA, which looked like a bloated donut in comparison, but I had to sacrifice my OEG in order to fit it into my system. So that's why I got the Wonder actually. I was hoping to remove the 18 millimeter adapter from my field flattener, and that would allow me to add the rotator and an OEG filter wheel, and of course the camera. With that, I'm pretty sure I have the correct back focus. I might be one millimeter over or so. Just don't tell Bob, it's gonna be fine. However, I did have some worries. I thought the thinner design might affect the device's integrity. I thought it might be weaker or perhaps more fragile. However, when I unboxed it, I was struck by how strong and rigid it felt. It also felt quite heavy and weighty, which made me feel a lot more secure. And as you can see here, it also comes with a USB type B 2.0 cable and a five millimeter by 2.1 millimeter DC power cable. I did place it next to my ZWO rotator. And as you can see here, it kind of looks like the CAA, but on Ozempic, of course. Long story short, most rotators are quite chunky and I needed something thin to fit into my system. So here we are. I personally got the M54 version of the rotator, but it does also come in M68 and I believe also M92. So no matter how big your imaging train is or your ego, there's a mini V2 for you. So if you get the correct version, it's actually very easy to install on your scope. And the company claims that it can handle 10 kilograms of payload and it has 1,142 degrees per step, which is a resolution of 0.005 degrees. It took me so many takes to get this right. What am I doing with my life? It also moves at a speed of 4.5 degrees per second. And they claim that it has no flexure or tilt, but we're going to put that to the test, of course. Unlike other rotators, yes, CWO, I'm looking at you. The Mini V2 actually has a self-locking mechanism. So when you try to tighten something in or unscrew something that is stuck, you shouldn't have to worry about damaging the internal drive system. Everything feels like a single solid unit with no play that I can detect. Sometimes with the ZWO CAA, if something's stuck and you need to pry it open, you actually need to poke it in the hole to hold the mechanism. <laughs> and also with the Prima Luce Lab Arco Rotator, it had some play that I couldn't tune down for the life of me. So I really did appreciate this particular aspect of the Wonder Astro Mini V2. I also noticed that the motor on this thing is quite a lot further away from the rotation axis than a lot of its competitors like the ZWO CAA and the Pegasus M54 rotator which is actually quite nice and it might give you a lot more flexibility when it comes to setting up your imaging train. You might also know that I'm a mobile imager so I take the scope fully configured like this and travel with it so having the self-locking mechanism is actually very much appreciated it just makes you feel secure when you throw the telescope in the back of the truck so here's my entire imaging train here as you can see let's take this telescope upstairs to the roof remotely log into it and we'll see just how plug and play this rotator actually is okay everybody so i took my telescope to the roof i've polar lined it and focused it and i also did some initial tests with it i took a 60 second exposure on one of the star clusters just to see whether or not the rotator introduced tilt into my system or not so let's actually check that out now here is my desktop on my mini PC. I'm going to open up Astap and then I'm going to click on file, load fits. And then I'm going to select the image that I took, the snapshot. I'm going to click on tools, image inspection, and then tilt. So as you can see here, this shows me a measurement of the tilt and the image. And this to me looks pretty good. Nothing is perfect, of course. These measurements are around the same measurements I get with and without the rotator. So that's good news to me. It says that the rotator did not introduce any extra tilt into the system. And I'm pretty happy about that. So I'm going to close Astop. Now I'm going to show you how to download and install the drivers for the Wanderer Astro equipment. They actually use an all-in-one software called the Wanderer Empire. You can download it through their website. Just go to your browser here and then go to Google or whatever search engine you use. Type in Wanderer Astro drivers. There we go and then click on the first link, Wonder Empire, and then simply download the exe file. Uh, I already downloaded it and installed it, so I don't need to do that. And I also have it pinned right here. So as you can see here, this is the Wonder Empire control panel. On the left, we have all of their products, their flat panel, their power boxes and USB hubs, the rotator and their ETA, the electronic tilt adjuster. This is a product that I'm looking forward to reviewing at some point in the future and some other options, including the firmware upgrade tab. For this review, I'm just gonna to connect to my flat panel because I do have a flat panel connected. You don't need to select the correct COM port. You can just click on connect. It should detect it by itself. If not, you can 
check this box and select it manually as you can see here it prompted me for a firmware upgrade i'm going to do that later on and i also have the rotator which is the main focus of this review i'm going to make sure that i click on device 2 and then i'm going to click on connect as well so there we are now my flat panel and my rotator is connected the flat panel is device 1 and the rotator is device 2. So let's have a look at some of the settings we have here on the rotator tab. We have a backlash setting. It says here that it's recommended to keep it at default, so I'm just not going to touch it. We also have virtual mechanical position. Here you can input a specific position and then go to it. And then we have set current position. This is useful if you want to set a zero position, for example. You can set the current position at whatever point that you choose. And then you have your derotation tab. We also have a reverse checkbox here. And it says here that you might need to enable this if you're using an older version of Nina. It says here specifically 2.3 and before. I'm using the newer versions of Nina, so I don't really need to enable this. And during my initial tests, everything seems to be working fine without me having to enable it. So I'm just going to keep it as it is. So I'm just going to minimize this and then I'm going to open up Nina. So the first thing that I want to do when I open up Nina is check first for the flat panel that device 1 is selected and then I'm going to check under rotator that device 2 is selected and then I'm going to simply connect all my devices. There we are, telescope's connected, focuser's connected. We're just waiting for the rotator which has connected successfully and now hopefully the flat panel should connect as well. And there we go, all of my equipment connected successfully. So I'm going to close all, I'm going to minimize the mount driver, and I'm going to minimize PhD2. So here we are, rotator, I have reverse turned off, I have the mechanical range set at full, and of course we're at the zero position. And just for the heck of it, let's have a look at my rotator, which is connected successfully as well. Sorry, my flat panel. <laughs> so for the sake of this example, I'm going to slew to the North American Nebula, NGC, 7000 just because i remember the ngc code for it <laughs> and i'm gonna set it for the framing assistant so i'm just gonna wait for the frame to load and there we go let's say that i'd like the frame to be well actually first let's determine the rotation of the camera so it's gonna plate solve and this is our current rotation let's say that we would like to correct it just like so. I'm going to click on this little arrow here and then I'm going to select slew, center and rotate. So this should actually re-slew the telescope and then confirm the rotation and then correct for it. And now it's confirming. And there we go. So I'm just going to click on determine rotation from camera again just to confirm. And there we are. So what just happened is my telescope is on the roof and I didn't like my initial framing of the camera and I was able to adjust it to my liking without me having to go up there and manually fiddle with it. A rotator really does make your life a lot easier. So there you go. I don't think this can be any easier. I don't think it can be any more plug and play. Of course, you can use this to your advantage with the advanced Nina sequencer. Let me just show you a sequence or an example sequence that I put together here, of course. What this would do is when I click on start sequence, it would cool the camera, turn on the do heater, unpark the mount. It would slew center and rotate to the target with the specific rotation that we selected using the framing wizard. It would then run autofocus, start guiding. It would start taking all of the exposures. I have triggers here like autofocus after filter change and after a specific amount of time. I have a meridian flip trigger and center after drift trigger. And of course, when all of this is completed, the telescope is going to go home, it's going to stop tracking, it's going to close the flat panel, which I also recommend that you buy from Wanderer Astro, and it's going to start taking its trained flat exposures for hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, and then it's going to turn off a flat panel because I have it here set brightness to zero, and then it's going to warm the camera, and that would be the end of the sequence. So what you can do is plan this whole sequence while you're at home before even you start imaging, and then when you're at the site, or if you have your telescope at a remote observatory, simply load up the sequence and click on start. So as you saw, a rotator can actually be a very useful device to have. A lot of folks are now imaging remotely and I can't imagine not having a rotator if I'm ever going to go that route. So it really does open up a lot of possibilities for automation. I actually have my advanced sequence now configured so that the rotator would actually rotate back to its original position after a night of imaging. It's a nice little touch to have. So with that said, let's talk about pros and cons, starting with the pros. 
The device, in my experience, has been very stable, very reliable, very precise, and very easy to use. I also like the Wonder Empire software, and you can also use this with Indy as well. There's Indy drivers if you want to use it with the Stellarmate, for example. And to me, the most important aspect of this device is that it's very forgiving in terms of back focus. But of course, there is nothing perfect, and in terms of cons, there's actually very little here, but I would have liked a USB-C connection rather than a USB Type-B connection and a DC connection, so that's two cables instead of one. And of course, the lack of ASI Air integration, but that's not Wonder's fault, that's on ZWO. It doesn't really affect me because I don't use the ASI Air anymore, I use a mini PC, but I know a lot of people do love the ASI Air and I wish that they had the option to use this device. So that pretty much sums it up for me. I will include links in the description for those interested. You can also sign up for the Wonder Astro newsletter if you want to hear more about their product. I do like their product line a lot. They're actually some of the first people in China to develop things like rotators and flat panels. Anyways, I hope you like this little review. I I do enjoy making these videos so don't forget to like comment and subscribe this has been astro pharma and thank you for watching